Limited Run Games has a pretty simple business model. Publish one or two games that were previously released digitally once a week in limited quantities. Ranging from as high as 11,000 copies and sometimes as low as 1,500, most of these games are made by indie developers who would otherwise never see a physical version of their game. Since these games are sold in limited quantities, it stands to reason that some of these games might be sought after and those who missed out might be willing to pay a lot more than the initial price. But how valuable will these games get? This is an episode of Retronomics, a series which evaluates the factors affecting the prices of video games. And in this episode, I'll take a look at some of the limited run games' prices and determine if they'll go up, down, or stay the same. Limited Run Games started in 2016 selling one game every month for the PlayStation 4 or Sony Vita. Out of the three main game companies, Sony makes it the easiest to order a low print run. The original run of games included a sealed physical version of the game with all the DLC, a postcard with the cover art, and a limited run sticker. Now fast forward to 2019 and now limited run games has established themselves as the de facto publisher. In fact, they are the largest publisher of Vita games. They now sell one to two games about every week and most games have a base game version and a collector's edition. And they now also sell Switch games and the occasional PC game. And as they have grown, their fan base has grown as well, so it's not uncommon for a very sought after title to sell out in two minutes or less. Limited Run Games lives up to their name. After a game published by them sells out, they will never produce any more. And because of this, it's assumed that the games will be valuable later on. Almost every game that sells out goes up on eBay for three to ten times more than the original sales amount. But just because a game sells out in seconds doesn't mean it's going to be worth more in the future. Night Trap PlayStation 4 Collector's Edition sold out crazy fast and fetched a lot of money initially, but now you can find one for about $20 over retail. If you factor in the eBay fees and shipping costs and the total time it would set on the shelf, it doesn't really seem worth it to buy limited run games for the sole purpose of flipping. And even then, according to PriceCharting.com, they aren't as popular as other sought-after games in the same price range. Earthbound sees two copies sold every day, where a game like Oddworld sells six copies every year. And part of the reason why those sales are so sluggish is because these games are sold new instead of used. Once you open up the game, you're losing a ton of value on this item. If you're a fan of the game, you probably already have a digital copy and are double dipping and buying from Limited Run, but for a newcomer to the game, it's probably not going to be appealing when some of these games are on sale for a fraction of the Limited Run counterparts and have been out significantly longer. This makes Limited Run games a poor and unreliable investment. While I was doing research for this episode, I noticed a couple of lots being sold off on eBay for essentially $21 a game. And also a lot of these games don't crack $100, and even games that have been out for years don't seem to be rising in value either. Collector's editions don't seem to be affecting the prices either. I purchased the Windjammers Collector's Edition at $70, including shipping, and eBay has them selling for about $75 with $13 shipping. Other games like Oddworld, Nude, and Tasty, however, are going for around $100 to $150 depending on the time it's sold. It's pretty volatile. Then you have the Jack and Daxter collection. Now this caught a ton of people by surprise because it was a mystery game up until it went live at 9am central time. Most fans were incredibly upset that they missed this edition and now it appears that there will be three more games getting the same collector's edition treatment. The price of this collector's edition is all over the place. Some copies selling for $300, others for $500, but now it does appear to have calmed down since I started tracking it and some can be had for less than $200, but given the popularity of this collector's edition, especially with more on the way, I doubt that you'll see any selling for less than $100 anytime soon. So up until this point, the limited run games that I've discussed have been PlayStation 4 games, but in April of 2018, limited run started selling Nintendo Switch games. And while these are still sold in limited quantities, they're sold differently than Sony games. Limited Run has an open pre-order for about two weeks, and then after those two weeks are up, the orders get placed to the nearest 1,000. So if 14,500 orders are placed, then Limited Run orders 15,000 pieces from Nintendo and then closes the pre-order. 
So since anybody can get a copy, how does this affect the value of these games? Well, it does appear to be a slow burn at first, but then prices spike up over time, but it really depends on the popularity of the game. Celeste, for example, had a handful of copies sell for $40 to $50 in January, and now some are selling for $80 plus. Thimbleweed Park, Limited Run's first Nintendo Switch game, had a steady price of $50 up until recently, and now is selling for about $90. And each of these games sold over 10,000 units, but I really think it's Nintendo Switch collecting taking off that's contributing to the increases in prices, and not necessarily that they're in limited quantities. And to back that up, if you look at the PlayStation 4 version of Celeste, it's selling for about $50, and that also might be due to the open pre-order, but Thimbleweed Park for the PlayStation 4 was in limited quantities of 3,500, and that's currently selling for around $50. Other Switch titles like Golf Story are going for around the same price as they regularly went for, and Saturday Morning RPG is hovering around $40. But Night Trap is going for about $60, so the prices are kinda all over the place. And since the Nintendo Switch ordering method seems to be pretty popular, they're applying it to PlayStation 4 games as well. Toe Jam & Earl, Celeste, all those have an open pre-order, and in an interview with G to the Next Level, Limited Run co-founder Douglas Bogart stated that they like this model more because in addition to everybody getting a chance to get a copy, fans can take their time and perhaps align orders with their paychecks or even combined shipping, instead of having to forego a game because of lack of funds. And it also shows developers how many physical copies can actually move. Having open pre-orders gives a really good estimate to exactly how popular a title is instead of just limiting it to 3500 and selling out in 2 minutes. And I really should mention Vita games, but I really don't have a lot of Vita games because I don't own a PlayStation Vita. But it's worth mentioning because the Vita has a really cult collecting following and I'm sure that the Vita will be on par with Saturn prices in the next couple of years. Vita games sell out the quickest on the site, and if you are a late arrival to limited run Vita titles, then you have some really heavy hitters to go after. Oddworld, New and Tasty, Rabbi Reby, Salt and Sanctuary, all of those are topping out the sold listings on eBay. And I'm sure that as more people start to look into Vita because now it's a retired console, these prices will continue to climb. However, you can still get a good deal on lots being sold on eBay and pay about $21 a game. With 236 titles in this library, the sheer volume of titles, there's bound to be some hidden gems that have fallen through the cracks that might spike up later in time. If you're still looking for cheap Vita games though, there's no shortage. Rock Boshes for $15, Mutant Mud for $20, all these games saw similar print runs, but only a handful are going for a decent amount. Recently, it was announced that Best Buy would be selling limited run games in their store and online, and this has caused quite a stir among people collecting limited run games from the start because it might affect the value of the games. And I had reached out to Josh Fairhurst on Twitter and he thinks that the value of limited run games will actually go up because of the Best Buy deal. And I have to say I kind of agree with him on this and here's why. Best Buy places their order at the same time as everybody else. So for example, Golf Story for the Nintendo Switch. As I mentioned before, they had an open pre-order limit. So if Best Buy wants to place an order for say 5,000 games, they can and if Best Buy sells out of their batch, then there will be no more to come in. In fact, the Best Buy version might be worth more in the long run because of a variant cover being limited. Also consider that brick and mortar stores will give limited run more eyeballs and more people will want to buy future titles from limited run games. More people who are new to limited run games might be inclined to purchase the back catalog, so more demand equals more value in the long term. Best Buy is also selling games before they hit limited run games. Super Meat Boy is on the store shelves now and it won't be sold by limited run until later in the year. This game was supposed to be released by another publisher but the deal fell through and limited run picked it up instead. Because of the scheduling of releases, Best Buy will sell it first and then limited run will sell collector's editions and base copies. Based on my research, the secondary limited run market is the highest about two weeks after an initial game goes on sale. 
Like other companies that offer limited sales, there's a secondary market that motivates career flippers to sell these games on eBay, and it's in their best interest to flip their purchase as soon as possible before demand dies off. Limited Run Games doesn't ship their games as soon as they're sold, and in some cases it can take 3 months to deliver a game to a buyer. And that's a lot of time for the game to fall into obscurity. Take Gelf for example. Gelf is a mini game in Golf Story for the Nintendo Switch. And as a surprise to fans, Limited Run Games partnered with Spoonie Bard Productions and Infinite NES Lives to bring a fully functional copy of Gelf to play on a Nintendo Entertainment System. Only 1,500 copies were made, and of those 1,500, 450 were made in white. Immediately after these sold out, they were up on eBay selling for about $250. Then around December, they started selling for about $100 to $120. Now, last February, they're selling for about $94, shipping included. No one really knows how valuable these games will be in the future, and I assume they'll go up in value as time goes on, but I'll be hard pressed to believe that we'll see a limited run based published game going for over $500 in the next 5 years. Collector's editions are a little bit different now that Jack and Daxter collection is out, but the higher the value of the game, the lower the pool of collectors who actually can afford to buy it and keep it sealed. And it does appear that Switch games sell a little bit more frequently, but one of the biggest hurdles, like I've said before, is that these games have to be sold new for them to maintain value. Sealed game collecting is a pretty niche sector of the game collecting hobby. I can't speak for everybody, but I'm not interested in spending $100 for a game that I'll never open and play, especially if there's a legal digital version readily available for a fraction of the price. But that could change if we reach a time where these digital copies are no longer available. I mean, we saw it with the Wii eShop, and it might happen with the PlayStation Network or Nintendo's current Switch shop. But by far the biggest concern going forward is what happens when these consoles finally ditch physical media. Limited Run Games' whole model is based on providing physical copies of games for use on that console. If there's no disc tray, what will be the point of providing a physical copy? Now that's up for speculation, but I think by the time everything goes 100% digital, limited run games will be big enough to start making deals to release physical copies on previous generations. They already are starting with the PlayStation 3 game Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. 4,000 copies were made and it sold out pretty quick. And they also have plans to release a Wii U title, but that has been muddled in litigation. If you are a fan of these games, don't gamble thinking that they'll be dropping in price. While some games have dropped below the initial price, most are 2 to 5 times the original retail price. So you'll want to try as hard as you can to get them at launch. And how do you get them at initial launch? Well, my advice is to get everything ready before the sale. About 5 to 10 minutes before the sale goes live, log into PayPal and Limited Run and make sure that your payment info is up to date. And make sure that your address is correct as well. Even entering the credit card information at the sale is moments lost because the checkout system doesn't reserve your item. It's first come, first serve. Of course, there are bots to compete with, but the staff at Limited Run has done a fairly good job of enforcing the rules and canceling those bot orders. There's also a waitlist for those who missed out entirely, so not all is lost. There will always be flippers looking to take advantage of impatient collectors with deep pockets, but if you wait for the hype to die down, you'll have a better chance of getting a deal. So let me know in the comments below what limited run games do you have, and do you open them up or do you keep them sealed? I opened up a handful of them for my video and I'm not regretting my decision. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new here, consider subscribing for future gaming content. Thanks so much for watching, I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.